Think cars, food, clothing, paper, machinery, uh, furniture, steel. These are all products that come from the manufacturing sector, one of the most important to South Africa's economy and development. According to the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, manufacturing accounts for around 11% of South Africa's labor force. The World Bank states that it has contributed 37% to the country's RAND value exports in 2022. Yet, like a number of others, manufacturing is being negatively affected by load shedding. South Africa's economic challenges, infrastructural issues and unemployment. At a recent Crema Media webinar, Philippa Rotseth, the executive director of the Manufacturing Circle, said there is a lack of demand for products of local manufacturers and that indicates a lagging contribution to the sector by South Africa's economy. How has this happened and what can we do to reverse the trend? Uh, Philippa Rotseth joins us now, as I say. She is the executive director of the Manufacturing Circle uh, and the line just dropped there as we come to her. So we're going to try and redial that number. Uh, But some people have raised the point that this is a sector that needs investment and it would certainly return it. Dr. Iraja Bidian, for example, says for every rand you inject into manufacturing, you could get uh, one rand 30 back. We do have Philippa on the line. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, the line just dropped there. I suppose, firstly, let's start with a broad picture. Can you paint for us how significant manufacturing is and could be to this economy? We describe the manufacturing sector as the engine of growth of the economy. Um, it's, it's really part of our entire ecosystem and has um, significant multipliers across value addition, job creation, export earnings. It is a very, very important component of our economy. In your introduction, you noted that manufacturing is contributing around 11% um, to GDP. We're in the process of what we would call premature deindustrialization, where Prior to 1994, manufacturing contributed around 24-25% to the economy. And um, we've slowly been losing production capacity due to a number of historic factors. But as you rightly noted in your introduction, lack of demand for manufactured product is, is a significant issue, which is very directly linked to low economic growth. So where we have low domestic growth, which we do at the moment, and also um, erratic global uh, um, uh, growth, that impacts from a demand side on the manufacturing sector. And in parallel, the supply side challenges, and there are many of those, load shedding being one of the uh, uh, highest priority issues at the moment, also negatively impact on the functioning of yeah. our sector. There's a whole basket of, of, of issues that really work against manufacturing, work against the economy. Uh, you've mentioned load shedding, but there are other issues, including crime, for example. Uh, some might even say that government interference has been partly to blame. We've seen, of course, in recent months, the rising interest rates. Uh, inflation is a problem. The growth that we just seem to can't get right. But are there opportunities? The crumbling infrastructure seems uh, something that we could focus on to try and kickstart some growth there. We definitely agree with that sentiment. As the manufacturing circle, identifying demand side opportunities is something we focus on um, and, and also you know, it's something that can drive the sector. So as you rightly note, infrastructure build. Where is it that our manufacturing sector, and uh, we are very competitive in, in certain areas, can supply into infrastructure build programs? We know for for example, that our state utility needs to extend its its transmission infrastructure. There are 8,000 kilometers of transmission line that need to be built, and that needs pylons, transformers, conductors, or, or more simply put, wires. 
So um, in each of these areas, there are opportunities for the supply of locally manufactured products and components. And the areas that we look to focus on is how can we get some sort of visibility of sustainable demand or or, um, uh, continued demand so that that then enables uh, production capacity to to, to prepare accordingly. So those are the kind of things that we look at because, uh, as you rightly note, challenges can also be uh, identified or, 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 or managed into opportunities. I mean, as as you describe all of that, my immediate thought is, but would we protect all of that infrastructure? You mentioned where we were in 1994, but there was a kind of reversal for a time in the 1990s. We peaked at 61% in terms of uh, manufacturing's contribution uh, to the RAND value of exports, at least according to the World Bank. So from that high of 61% in 2002, we're now sitting at around 30 What did we do right then? And was it just that the conditions were right at that time or could we replicate it again? Part of our, uh, let's say, manufacturing success prior to 1994 did have to do with the fact that we were operating mainly within a sanctioned environment. Um, The exports, obviously, notwithstanding the comment on exports, which could have uh, dealt with a certain aspect or component of uh, of the sector. The uh, once we moved over to democracy, uh, the opening up of our uh, trade barriers. So, so those export stats, I'm not sure what they pertain to particularly. It might have been um, minerals or, or, or slightly beneficiated products. But what we did see is that once we opened up um, to 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 the to, to free markets, quite a lot of our local manufacturing sector um, wasn't able to compete within those global value chains, particularly at the same time as uh, some of uh, global countries, particularly China, were ramping up. So we lost quite a lot of our local manufacturing to imports. Um, and that was because of the change in, okay. um, in our econ- economic uh, aspects. Philippa, we're still a net exporter of iron ore, of coal, of uh, ferrous alloys, manganese. You mentioned the word beneficiation. We've got, I would say, a really reasonably healthy, if not thriving, automotive industry. Why aren't we learning from the capacity we've already built to make sure we are sending out finished goods? We are looking to do that. And automotive sector, we would I would describe as really the poster child of what it is that we can do um, by way of consistent work and planning between government and industry, um, and that was really a sector master plan. So in similar vein, we are looking at other areas or value chains where this kind of thinking can be replicated, noting that it's always a little bit different. So in this steel and metal fabrication master plan, for example, we are looking at the value chain from upstream, from our mills, all the way down to beneficial product and what it is that we are competitive at and where is it that we can identify export markets. Um, We've got a steel master plan exports work stream where we're looking in parallel at uh, projects and products, funding and marketing to identify four or five uh, specific projects in um, export markets within the continent to see where we could look to access project opportunities on what we'd call an SA Inc. basis. In other words, looking um, across the spectrum as to where we are strong as far as the expertise, the products, um, the financial structuring, so that just, we can start getting that sort of uh, thinking going. We've, I mean, you mentioned about a, a premature deindustrialization in your first comment, and it's happening quite rapidly, and it has been Uh, for some time now. What I'm struggling with is that these things are known. We can see the job losses. We can see the market share dropping. 
But where is the vision to turn it around? I mean, where is the kind of policy shock thinking that would set the you know that would that would change that would change things and and make us go the opposite direction? Do we have a vision? That's a, that's a good question, and I often ask myself the the same question. Um, I guess the long answer is that. I, I, I think we're trying to, to solve for too many things. Um, not only are we looking at um, uh, growing the manufacturing sector, we are also looking at um, dealing with um, uh, equitable um, business within different geographies. And that sometimes um, takes away from the focus where, in fact, we've got a shrinking pie being the manufacturing sector. So, um, from a policy perspective, we've got a lot of policies. What we are poor at, and I would put that across um, across the country, both government and industry, we're poor at implementation, prioritizing and focusing. Um, so uh, as we've mentioned, there's a long laundry list of, um, of, of challenges. But what are our priority challenges? Our factories, for example, are all based in municipalities. Municipal service delivery is an issue that um, is, is uh, common across the board. So what is it that we can do to focus on the certain municipalities where we've got high concentration of industrial activity to see where industry and municipalities can work together to fix that infrastructure, which, um, which caters to production operations within the manufacturers. It allows them to produce, it allows them to keep their staff, it may allow them to actually invest over time, and also the surrounding communities are supported. So those are the, that's the kind of thinking it would be it's important to have a single vision, and I would indicate that a focus on the manufacturing sector and possibly looking at municipal service delivery as um, our first priority on the supply side, and where is it that from a demand side we can access those large infrastructure projects, get at, get visibility of what that spend looks like yeah. so that we can prepare accordingly. Oh, it must be so frustrating. It must be so frustrating to look at the situation, to be able to stand back and say, look, here are the easy wins. Here are the immediate things you could do. Uh, it must be so frustrating to have a sense of what it could be if there was visionary leadership and to talk to people who could do this tomorrow in their sleep if they wanted to. But when there's no political will to match what the private sector is saying, this is where we find ourselves talking about what could be instead of what is. Appreciate your time. Philippa Rotseth, the Executive Director at the Manufacturing Circle. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.